Hello, if you're watching this video, it means that you're probably a beginner or maybe early intermediate to DaVinci Resolve. This is going to be a series of videos, so if you are a beginner, you just found a great playlist that's going to show you everything that you need to know to get started in DaVinci Resolve all the way to getting finished in DaVinci Resolve. So you're going to learn everything from installing Resolve to opening it for the first time to getting your settings set right. There is one setting that if you've been doing it on your own, you've already got it installed and launched and everything, there is one setting that you probably haven't changed that you definitely, definitely want to change. So make sure you watch until at least that part of the video where I cover that because it's a killer. We're going to learn about the tabs in there. We're going to learn about the different pages. We're going to learn about some different options you have. We're going to learn about some basic edits, some basic coloring all the way until we get to the final export, which can be kind of weird if you're used to other NLEs, unless you're used to, I guess, After Effects. So without any further ado, let's teach you how to use DaVinci Resolve from start to finish. Part one, installing launching and importing. Depending on how new to DaVinci Resolve you are, you may not know that they're actually made by Blackmagic Design. There is no DaVinciResolve.com or anything like that. So you're going to Google DaVinci Resolve, go to BlackMagicDesign.com slash products slash DaVinci Resolve. You're going to get a big old billboard up here at the top and it says download right in the middle of it below DaVinci Resolve 16. Go ahead and click on download choose your operating system. I'm going to recommend that you go with DaVinci Resolve 16 beta because it's going to update probably relatively soon into the full version of DaVinci Resolve 16, but if you're uncomfortable using a beta version, they also have DaVinci Resolve 15 here for you to download. Go ahead and choose your operating system. It's going to come up and you got to fill in all this stuff and then hit register and download. After you do that, it's going to download and you will be off to the races. So, once you get your DaVinci Resolve installed, you're going to go ahead and open it. Once you click it, if you see this splash screen or splash screen like it, you know that it's doing the right thing. So, you may not necessarily get this right away. You're probably going to have to answer some prompts. If it's not at this step, it's between this step and the next step. It's been a little bit, so I'm not quite remembering fully where it's at. But we're going to go ahead and open a new project. It's going to be Untitled Project 2 just for this, but you name it whatever you need it to be named. And then you're going to be met with DaVinci Resolve. I'm going to real quick just reset my UI so that it looks exactly how yours looks. And we're going to go through the different tabs here. So, media. This is where a lot of people like to organize their media. So you can see right now, no clips in media pool. So if you go ahead and right click, import media and then find your media that you want to use. We're just going to work on this clip here. It's going to say the clips have a different frame rate than the current project settings. Would you like to change your timeline frame rate and video for format to match? I'm going to click on don't change because I like to keep all of my clips how they are before I bring them in and then I'll change them later on if I need to, but that's not for this episode. That's not a beginner tactic. We're learning about beginner stuff right now. So the cut page we're also going to get into later, but it's designed to help you edit faster. But we'll get into how to use this in a later episode of this series. The edit page. We are definitely going to be learning about the edit page today because I think that it's the easiest way as well as the most important to learn because it's the most powerful way to edit in DaVinci Resolve and you're going to be able to transfer these skills into other NLEs if you ever need to. The Fusion page. This is where you're going to come if you need to make any video effects or compositing or anything like that. Masking. Basically everything that you would do inside of After Effects you can do in the Fusion page here with these nodes but again we're going to get into this one in a future episode the color page we're also going to be talking about this episode this is where you can color grade your footage davinci resolve has some of the best color grading out of 
any of the video editors on the market right now. It's used all the way up to like Hollywood level productions. I'm pretty sure they did Pacific Rim in here. So it's definitely powerful enough to do what most of us need it to be able to do. With Fairlight, we have another one that we're not going to be talking about this episode, but we're going to get into later on because, again, it is a little bit more advanced and you don't need to know about it to get your projects started. And then we get to the Deliver page, which is the third page that we're going to be talking about in this episode. This is where you come to export, render, generally just deliver your projects to whoever you're trying to deliver them to, whether that's YouTube, Vimeo, DVDs, your family, your friends, school maybe, whatever it is, this is where you come to get it out there. So, we're going to get started with some basic edits. So, first things first, what I like to do is once we have this going on here, I like to come up and click on effects library so I can see all of these effects over here. Even if I'm not going to be using them at that moment, I like to have them up so that I can see them and get to them quickly if I need to. So the first tools we're going to talk about are the blade tool and the selection tool. Those are going to be the most important basic tools that you have access to and you will need inside of the edit page in DaVinci Resolve. So all you're going to do is click on this blade right here or hit B, hotkey for the blade tool and then you can cut your footage wherever you need it to be cut. So we'll just go ahead and give it a slice right there. We'll give it a slice right there. And then we'll use our selection tool, which is hotkey A. We're gonna go ahead and select what we cut out or what's after the cut or before the cut, whatever you need to do. But we're gonna go ahead and select this portion here. We're gonna hit shift backspace. What you do with shift backspace is called a ripple delete. So you delete something and pull everything toward it. I'm going to go ahead and control Z, undo. But if we just hit backspace, it's going to just delete that clip and nothing else is going to move. So I'm a big fan of the ripple delete because it saves me time having to drag things around. Again, ripple delete is shift delete. So we're going to go ahead and drag this over. And if you watch, when I get close, it's going to snap. If you want that snap to be there, this magnet needs to be highlighted. If you don't want the snap to be there, magnet needs to not be highlighted. So you'll see there is no snap. I can just drag this smoothly wherever I want it to be. The hotkey for snapping is N. So next up, we're going to learn about linking and unlinking clips. This will allow you to take the audio off of a clip or put audio onto a clip if you're using sound effects or things like that. So get the clip that you want selected, we're going to use this one right here, and then Control alt l Now that you've done that, you can select them individually and move them around without the other one. So if you wanted to get rid of the sound on this clip, you click on the sound alone after unlinking and then just hit backspace to delete it. We're going to bring that back. If you wanted to relink something or link something for the first time, go ahead and Control alt l with both of them selected, which you can do by clicking and dragging, or clicking and then control clicking the other thing that you want. So if there's something here and then something over here that you wanted, you click one, control click the other, and then Control alt l to get them linked. So we're going to drag these together, they'll snap, we're going to bring in a blur dissolve, Gonna put it right between those two. You just drag those out. And we are going to watch that happen. There it was, blur dissolve. Easy transition, doesn't look like too much, pretty smooth. So you're just gonna make cuts and drag things where they need to go until your video starts to take form. And once your video is where you want it to be cut wise, you're gonna hop over on into this color page so, this is editing Garrett here, editing the video that you're currently watching, and I totally forgot to tell you about that crazy setting. So, here's you learning about that crazy setting. You're gonna go up to DaVinci Resolve, you're gonna go ahead and click on Preferences, you're gonna go to User, you're gonna come down to Project, Save, and Load, and you're going to turn Live Save on, because I don't know if they've updated it, but for the longest time, Default for Live Save has been off. 
You want to perform backups just about as often as is annoying. If it's not kind of bothering you how frequently this thing auto-saves, it needs to be. Because if this is off and Resolve crashes for any reason, your entire project that you've worked on during that session is gone. So make sure you have live save on, turn it to like 5 or 10 minutes so that that's the maximum amount of time that you can lose if your power goes out, if your computer explodes, if resolve crashes, if anything happens. Just make sure that you have auto save or live save in this case turned on. All right. Back to the back to the video. and you are going to be changing some stuff around. So here we have our primaries wheels, which consist of our lift, gamma, gain, and offset wheels. You can think about these as shadows, midtones, highlights, and overall. If you change the gain, it's mostly going to affect your highlight areas. Change the gamma, it's mostly going to affect your midtone ranges. And if you change your lift, it's mostly going to affect your shadowed ranges. If you want to reset any of these, you just double click inside the wheel or click on the little back arrow above that wheel. If you make a ton of changes in here and you're like, whoa, it's not looking so good anymore, you can reset this whole panel by clicking on this little back arrow with the plus in it. And then you're back to normal. Over here we have curves. If you're familiar with any photo editors or other video editors, you've probably seen curves before. This side is the highlights and the white colors. This side is the dark colors and the blacks. So you can see how that cleared up quite a bit by just doing this small adjustment in the curves. Everything you do in here can have pretty drastic effects, so play around with it. Find something that looks good with your footage. Generally what people like to do is just a little bit of an S-curve. It's not going to look so good on this footage per se, but on a lot of footage that S-curve is going to look really nice because it increases the contrast. But your curve will probably not look like mine. It'll look a little different. And then once you get your curve set and your exposure is good, you can come over here and tweak your exposure a little bit further with contrast down here, saturation, that's not for exposure, but you know what saturation is. Saturates colors. Hue, you could change the hue of all of the colors in there. That can add some really cool stylized effects, but it's not so great for everything. Midtone detail brings up the clarity. It's like using the clarity slider in Lightroom. That's all the way fuzzy. That's all the way clear. Color boost performs very similarly to saturation, though it's not quite as intense. You can bring up the brightness of your shadows down with the brightness of your shadows, bring up the highlights, bring down the highlights. You can change the temperature from warm to cold, and the tint goes from green to pink. If you are having trouble white balancing your footage, you can grab on this white balance dropper, bring it up over top of your footage up here, and then find something where the R, G, and B are all very similar numbers. We're not going to get that here, except I guess off the frame. If we click that, that's not going to do anything. So you want to find something within your frame with very similar numbers. I'm not going to find that here because everything is pretty teal. There's no red anywhere. So if I click something, it's gonna get all reddish, greenish because it was pretty heavily blue. So once you have your clip colored how you want it to be colored, you're going to go ahead and pop into the deliver page. This is where you're gonna name your file. Name it, I don't know, tutorial. But you're probably gonna name it my first movie or something awesome like that. Go ahead and hit browse to tell it where you're going to be saving it. So go through, figure out where you want to save it. We're just going to save ours to desktop, hit save. Now that's selected. Right here where it says render single clip individual clips. If you choose individual clips, you're going to be able to render each of these separately. So if you're working on a bunch of different like stock clips or something and you don't want to have to open a bunch of new timelines, 
go into individual clips and work on it like that. But we're gonna go ahead and do single clip because we want this to export as one seamless film. Out, two clips, film. Choose your format. We're gonna go ahead and go with MP4 because I like to upload my videos to YouTube so that you guys can watch them. And YouTube tends to like MP4 because they're not huge files and they still retain a pretty decent amount of quality. Then you're gonna choose your resolution. Don't go with anything higher than your actual timeline settings. It's not gonna make it look 4K. It's gonna make it look pixely. You don't really wanna do that. Frame rate. Try to stick with whatever your footage was shot at. Quality, I like to leave it automatic. Unless I need something to be a smaller file size, then I'll turn this down to like 12,000 or something like that. But I'm gonna leave it at automatic. Encoding profile, you can go ahead and just leave that at base. Keyframes, automatic. Frame reordering, check. So, once all this is how you like it, or if you don't want to deal with setting all this up, just go ahead and click on any of these presets up here if you know that they're the one that you need. So if you're uploading to YouTube and you're like, I don't want to learn any of this stuff, just go ahead and click on the YouTube button up here, and then you'll only have to change a couple of things. We're going to go back to custom, fix this, and it's called Untitled now. So we're going to go ahead, once all this is set up, we're going to hit Add to Render Queue. It's going to pop on over to the right side. It's going to say Job 1, Untitled Project, Timeline 1. You're going to go ahead and hit Start Render. Then you're going to see a percentage up here, an estimated time remaining, and you're going to see your video playing back in a pretty skippy form. Once this gets to the end, once this gets to the end, your video will be done rendering and it will be ready to watch where you told it to be up here in the location section. So I'm going to skip to the end of this real quick so that you don't have to watch it. All right, so done. Playhead popped a little bit back here. Completed in 42 seconds. If we go to my desktop, here it is. You can see the video that we just made. Find that transition. Boom, there it is. So that's how easy it is to completely put together a video in DaVinci Resolve from start to finish. Make sure to check out the next episode in this series where we learn a little bit more about the Fusion page because this is an incredibly powerful tool that you definitely want to know how to use. And real quick before we wrap this episode up, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this video and you learned something from it and want to see the next in the series. And if you would rather spend more time editing and less time worrying about keywords, keyword research, things of that nature, make sure you check out TubeBuddy, which is a fantastic tool that allows you to spend more time doing the things that you like and less time doing the things that a machine can do and you don't want to do. So there's a link in the description down below to TubeBuddy. If you do get it, I may eventually get some sort of affiliate compensation, but for now, it's just there for you guys to make it easy for you to find. Again, make sure you subscribe so you can see the next episode when it comes out, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.